Ethiopian Airlines, commonly referred to as Ethiopian, Amharic, Romanized, Ye Ethiopia Ayer Menged, formerly Ethiopian Airlines, EOL is the flag carrier of Ethiopia and is wholly owned by the country's government. EOL was founded on 21 December 1945 and commenced operations on 8 April 1946, expanding to international flights in 1951. The firm became a share company in 1965 and changed its name from Ethiopian Airlines to Ethiopian Airlines. The airline has been a member of the International Air Transport Association since 1959 and of the African Airlines Association, AFREA. Since 1968, Ethiopian is a Star Alliance member, having joined in December 2011. The company's slogan is the New Spirit of Africa. Ethiopian's hub and headquarters are at Bol International Airport in Addis Ababa, from where it serves a network of 125 passenger destinations, 20 of them domestic, and 44 freighter destinations. The airline has secondary hubs in Togo and Malawi. Ethiopian is Africa's largest airline in terms of passengers carried, destinations served, fleet size, and revenue. Ethiopian is also the world's fourth largest airline by the number of countries served. The 1940s, early years, after the liberation of Ethiopia, Emperor Hale Selassie, I asked the United States, the United Kingdom, and France to help him to establish an airline as part of his modernization effort. According to BBC News, it is possible that the emperor intended the creation of a quality national airline to help dispel impressions of Ethiopian poverty. In 1945, the Ethiopian government began negotiations with Transcontinental Air Transport and Western Air Express, later merged into TWAI. On 8 September 1945, TWAI signed an agreement with the American historian and foreign affairs advisor to Ethiopia, John H. Spencer, to establish a commercial aviation company in Ethiopia. The carrier, originally called Ethiopian Airlines, EL, was founded on 21 December 1945 with an initial investment of ETB 25 million divided into 25 million, divided into 25,000 shares that were entirely held by the government. The company was financed by the Ethiopian government, but managed by TWAI. In the beginning, it relied upon American pilots, technicians, administrators, and accountants. Even its general managers were from TWAI. Minister of Works and Communications, Fitaurari Tafasi Hops Mikawel, became EEL's first president and chairman. Whereas H. H. Holloway, who was American, was appointed by Tuo as general manager. The board held the first meeting on 26 December 1945, with a critical point of the agenda being the deposit of F 75,000 in a bank in Cairo for the acquisition of aircraft and spare parts. Shortly afterward, the airline negotiated for landing rights with Aden, Egypt, French Somaliland, Saudi Arabia, and Sudan, and five Douglas C 47s were bought. These aircraft were flown to Addis Ababa and these aircraft were flown to Addis Ababa in February 1946. The 1950s, start of long-haul route services to Bombay were withdrawn in July 1950. Also this year, a use $1 million, equivalent to $11,262,794 in 2021. Loan granted from the XM Bank enabled the carrier to incorporate Convair KVU 204s aimed at operating in an hour two CV-240s named Eagle of Ethiopia, and Hale Selassie I entered the fleet in December 1950. Starting January 1951, these aircraft were subsequently deployed on the Addis Ababa Cairo, Addis Ababa, Nairobi, and Addis Ababa, Jeddah, 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 Jeddah G routes with Dayaran and Sharjah being incorporated to the route network on 20 February. In April 1952, the airline was appointed general sales agent for Tway in Kenya, Tanganyika, Uganda, and Zanzibar. And by May the same year, the fleet consisted of two conveyor liner 240s and nine Douglas DC. Threes are their subtypes, operating a route network that was 11,000 km, c 1,000 mile. Services to India and Sharjah were discontinued in 1953. On 14 July, a new agreement with Tway that succeeded the original one was signed. Unlike other companies, the airline's preamble stated that it was the ultimate aim that EEL shall eventually be operated entirely by EEL shall eventually be operated entirely by Ethiopian personnel. A new service to Athens via Khartoum and Wadi Halfa was launched on 3 April 1954. A third conveyor CV-240, the Spiritual Power, was purchased from Sabina in 1955 for us $560,000. 
equivalent to $5,664,696 in 2021. These aircraft were equipped with rocket-assisted takeoff devices. This was a common practice for a small number of airlines in the world that EEL had abandoned by April 1956. Also in 1955, Ethiopian inaugurated a cell phone maintenance facility. That year, Vic Harrell succeeded Swede Golian as general manager of the company. The carrier was in need of newer and larger aircraft and three different aircraft types. Two from the Lockheed Corporation, the Constellation and the Electra, and the Douglas D-6 were considered for the fleet renewal program. Two Douglas DC-6Bs were eventually ordered in 1956 for US $4 million, including spares. An option for a third machine was also taken. Another loan obtained from the Exim Bank, a 75 million one dating back to 1955, was partly used to finance the two purchased aircraft. Benghazi was briefly served between 7 November 1956 and 15 January 1957. In 1957, a third DC Zek B was purchased. Likewise, that year, the airline had been asked to take a Lockheed L-749 that had been given as a gift to the emperor, who declined it. Ethiopian paid use $1.06 million for this airframe, and it was incorporated into the fleet on 4 June. The aircraft was destroyed by fire on 10 Jewel in an accident in Sudan. Two Yemeni cities, Hodaida and Taz, were first served on 1 September 1957. On 23 May 1958, flights to Wadi Halfa were terminated. The incorporation of three Douglas DC-6Bs took place between May and July, and EEL started a new link between Addis Ababa and Athens via Cairo using these recently delivered aircraft. On 21 June, the route was extended both to the north and to the south, so that Frankfurt and Nairobi became linked by the same corridor, operated with DC-6. By this time, the conveyors were redeployed to serve domestic and regional routes. Given that radio operators were no longer required as part of flight crews, they were assigned other tasks with the airline. Swissair handled the pilot training for the DC E6 aircraft at Zurich. The suspension of Fifth Freedom rights between Djibouti and Aden prompted the discontinuance of the route that linked them. EEL joined the International Air Transport Association IATA, on 1 January 1959. During the year, two Boeing 720Es were ordered and scheduled for delivery in December 1961. Two more DC-6Bs entered the fleet. Services to Nairobi were suspended once more, and the airline's list of domestic destinations saw the incorporation of Bolchi, Dodalo, Lalibila, and Misawa. The 1960s and 1970s. The Jet H Port Sudan was removed from the list of destinations on 1 March 1960. The airline had its first fatal accident on 15 July when a DC-3 crashed en route from Bolchi to Jimma, killing the pilot. A conveyor 240 was sold to Allied Stores of Israel on 18 July. On 12 August, an order with Boeing for two Boeing 720E aircraft was placed. EEL's general manager had already brought the idea of acquiring two jet aircraft for long haul, operations up already in February, suggesting the Boeing 720. The Sud C-210 Caravelle, the de Havilland DH-106 Comet 4, and the Boeing 720B were all taken into account. Hot and high condition of some eel operations made the caravel inappropriate, whereas the comet was considered obsolete. The first east-west link made by an African airline started on 8 November, when the Addis Ababa Accra Lagos Monrovia route was launched using DC-6B equipment. The second fatal accident took place on 5 September 1961, when another DSE-3 crashed shortly after takeoff from Sindafar. A flight attendant and four passengers lost their lives in the accident. The event urged the Civil Aviation Department to investigate the accident. It was found that the lack of infrastructure at many airfields, marginal even for DC-3 operations, was a major contribution. Landing sites at Gore, Mazan, Tafiri, and Tipi were included in the list of airfields that would require closure. On 13 January 1962, the crew and four passengers lost their lives in another accident involving a DC-3 Registration at D1, EEL's first aircraft of the type. This time, the crash taking place at Tippi while the aircraft was taking off. The event prompted the government to decide to close the airfields at both Mizan Teferi and Tippi. In March 1962, two more DC 3s were acquired and registered at B and at off during the year, the ET. Registration would change to simply at. Jack B. Azir became general manager in April 1962. It was also decided to build a new airport to replace the Lidita airfield. 
which was unable to accommodate the Boeing 720 jetliner the company intended to acquire. This was the birth of Bowl International Airport, where the company set its headquarters. In December 1962, the arrival of two Boeing 720s ordered directly from Boeing marked the carrier's entrance into the jet age. These two aircraft were registered at age. These two aircraft were registered at AOG and were named the Blue Nile and White Nile, respectively. The first jet service took place on 15 January 1963, when one of these aircraft was deployed on the route to Nairobi. The following day, a new service to Madrid was flown using the new jet equipment, with Frankfurt joining the jet network soon afterward. On 1 April, the Boeing 720 replaced the DC-6 on the Addis Ababa. Then's route during that month, the West African Corridor also benefited from jet operations. The airline entered into a pool agreement with Aden Airways and Sudan Airways on the Khartoum. Asmara, Aden Service. A new flight to Conakry was launched on 8 May 1963 Kano, which had been served since 18 March 1962, was removed from the list of destinations that day. On 30 November 1963, the airline lost another DC-3, Eat Iat, in a test flight at Addis Ababa. The crew of three suffered minor injuries. Rome was served for the first time on 5 June 1964 on a weekly basis. The flight was routed via either Khartoum or Athens as part of a pool agreement with Alito Talia. Also in the early 1960s, the carrier provided some initial aviation support to the Ethiopia, United States mapping mission in its operation to acquire topographic maps of Ethiopia. The firm changed from a corporation to a share company in 1965 and changed its name from Ethiopian Airlines to Ethiopian Airlines. By 1966, the contractual relationship with TWE was adjusted to reflect the transfer of management with the appointment of an Ethiopian Deputy General Manager, and Colonel Semrit Medhane was appointed to the post. Two Boeing 720s were in operation and a Boeing 707-320C was due to be phased in by March 1968 when the carrier ordered a second, 320 c In 1970, the fifth renewal of the original 1945 contract changed Tway's role from manager to the advisor. On its 25th anniversary in 1971, the company was ready to continue without foreign assistance. Since then, Ethiopian Airlines has been managed and staffed by Ethiopian personnel. The first Ethiopian general manager was Colonel Semret Medhane, appointed in 1971. Two Boeing 720Bs were acquired from Continental Airlines in 1973. In 1975, the carrier ordered 5-7s. By then, Ethiopian Airlines had ended its 30-year relationship with TWA. The airline became a new customer for the Boeing 727 in 1978, ordering two. The 727s arrived in the late 1970s as a replacement for the oldest Boeing 720s. The 1980s and 1990s, the DEDXC, Five Buffalo entered Ethiopia's fleet in the early 1980s. In 1982, Ethiopia became the first African carrier in ordering the Boeing 767, as well as the first airline to order the Boeing 760C Ven 200. On 1984 6, 1. The first of these aircraft set a new distance record for a twin jet flying 12,100 km, 7,500 mi non-stop from Washington, D.S.C. to Addis Ababa on delivery to the company. The Boeing 767, 200 ers came to replace the remaining Boeing 720. Atra 42s and Twin Otters were incorporated into the fleet in the mid-1980s, with the first of six Twin Otters entering the fleet in early 1985. The Boeing 730, 7200 joined the fleet in late 1987. In 1990, Ethiopian became the first passenger airline in taking delivery of the Boeing 757 freighter, receiving the first of five Boeing 757, two hundreds a year later. By 1996, the airline was flying to Bangkok, Beijing, Durban, and Johannesburg. Routes to Ivory Coast and Senegal were also being operated. Furthermore, the Fokker 50 entered the fleet to operate domestic routes. Actually, Ethiopia became the last company in taking delivery of this aircraft in 1997, just after the collapse of Fokker due to financial problems. In the late 1990s, the carrier saw the incorporation of Copenhagen and Maputo into its international network, as well as New York City and Washington as transatlantic destinations. The frequent flyer program named Sheba Miles after the legendary Queen of Sheba was launched too. 
In 1998, the airline disrupted their flights to the Eritrean capital Asmara after a war erupted between the two countries. 2000. Present a fleet renewal started in the early 2000s with the incorporation of the Boeing 737-700 into Boeing 700 and the Boeing 767-300. The airline discontinued its service to Newark in favor of serving Washington in 2004. In the late 2000s, the airline announced it would be the launch customer of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and placed orders to acquire brand new Airbus A350-900s, Boeing 777, 277, 200 ls and Bombardier equipment. In late September 2010, Ethiopian Airlines was officially invited to join Star Alliance under the mentoring of Lufthansa. The carrier became a member of the alliance in December 2011 the third Africa-based carrier in doing so. Following Egypt Air and South African Airways and the 28th member worldwide.